I'm Jenny Barnett Roars, and we're meeting bloggers to discover the projects they do with their kids. Jessica Hill has the blog MaddenCrafts.com. Let's meet her online. So now we're here with Jessica Hill of Madden Crafts. She's been blogging for about five years, but she's been mommying for longer than that. And we're so glad to have you with us today, Jessica. Hi, thanks for having me. Excellent. So I was just wondering, um, I'm familiar with your blog, but I'm wondering if, to tell our viewers at home, does your blog have like a theme or a focus? I like to share anything that inspires me or that I've gotten my hands dirty making. So I do everything from home decor to kids crafts to recipes. Kind of cover it all. Wow, that is amazing. And do your kids craft with you on the blog? They do. I, I try to make projects that they can help me with or that they can play with when I'm finished with them. That's so much fun, isn't it? They really enjoy it. They, they get really excited. <laughs> Okay, so on that, um, since you do craft with your kids, do you have any special products that you like to use with the little ones? I like anything that is washable. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, tempera paints or markers, those are good base, bases for um, whether we're doing printing or we're making like a, a clothing project. I like to use something that isn't going to get all over the house. Hmm, that's a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And when do you like to craft with your kids? Is it an everyday thing or a seasonal thing? I especially like to make gifts for other people with my kids. We make um, Mother's Day and Father's Day presents or sometimes teacher gifts because I think, uh, especially for teachers, they get so many things throughout their careers. If it's handmade, it's a little more memorable. That's so lovely and so thoughtful of you. Can you tell us a little bit about one of those teacher's gifts you've made? Absolutely. One of the first gifts my son made for his preschool teacher, we took just some um, vinyl stickers and added it to a mug, and then I had him finger paint all over it. He was only three years old, and then we peeled away the lettering and then, you know, cured it in the oven, and that was his gift for his preschool teacher. That sounds so adorable. Jessica, thank you so much for your time here today, and now we're going to go back into the studio and we're going to make your craft next. Now that we've met Jessica, let's make her adorable pinwheel wreath. You're going to need some basic supplies, including some styrofoam rings. You're going to need some felt, some needle and thread, scissors, burlap, uh, some glass head pins are really handy, maybe a ruler, and some strong glue. So to get started, we're going to actually wrap the styrofoam with the burlap. And the easiest thing to do is just kind of shake it out and use one of these pins. If you go ahead, and pin it on the back. You can then kind of just loosely wrap it around. And it doesn't have to be really super fancy because uh, we are gonna put all of these wonderful pinwheels that we make on top. So this takes just a minute, and I'll do about halfway so you can see. And then add a couple of pins as you go to hold it in place, like this, boom. Okay, so I will finish wrapping it, except there's, let's see, I'm gonna be a little short on the wrap here. Close enough, there we go, I'm just make it work. And again, a couple more pins to just hold things in place. So now, we're gonna go ahead and make our pinwheels. And this is so simple and so fun. We're going to use a four by four piece of cardboard and I like to use clothes pins. That way I don't have to really trace and cut. I can just clip it and then cut it out. Now, this is for a four inch pinwheel, but of course you could use a post-it note and make three inch pinwheels or whatever size you like. To actually create the pinwheel itself, we're going to snip from the corner into the middle, but not all the way. You're gonna leave a little space about the size of a quarter so that it doesn't go all the way through just like this. And then we have to stitch it down. So here we're going to take a little bit of needle and thread, pour, pull one corner into the center, and take a stitch. Just up once and down. You're gonna, and if you don't know how to sew, you can go ahead and glue this step if you like. Um, or, I don't know, might be able, put a, a brad through there or a paper fastener. But a couple of stitches will finish it off. 
And then if you want to make it really cute and decorative, go ahead and add a button on top. That makes the pretty center. When you're done, you'll have something that looks like this. And then we get to decorate. And to decorate, all you have to do is use those pins and pin your pinwheels, you see how that works, right into place. Use different sizes and scatter them around. To finish it off, you're going to use a piece of ribbon and a little bit of strong glue and add one more pinwheel on top. Or, you know, I think you could even pin that as well. Then you make a little loop at the top and you are ready to hang. Let's go back again and look at the finished one and take a look at all the different kinds of felt. This is a great project for using up scraps and pretty pieces too because you don't need a whole lot of any one. And again, a little bit of glue or a few straight pins and you're ready to go.